Are you working with a financial advisor? Are you thinking of working with a financial? You've talked to a financial advisor and you're uncertain about how to know if the financial advisor is good. In this video, I'm going to share with you three ways to know if the financial advisor that you're already working with or considering working with is good. When I did the research for this video, I found lots of information about how to find a financial advisor that's the right fit for you or how to hire a financial advisor, what to look for in a financial advisor, et cetera, et cetera. But what we really, really want to know is how to know if your financial advisor is good. That's more important than knowing the certifications that the financial advisor has or you know, various other factors that I'm seeing in this information is, is the financial advisor any good? So in this video, I'm going to share with you three things, like I said, that will help you determine this. Now, why do I know this and who am I anyway? I'm a financial coach. I'm not a financial advisor. So I get to be really unbiased about this because, well, as a coach and as a personal investor myself that's invested for 40 years in just about every method and strategy and time frame and asset class there is, except for crypto, I have no attachment to a certain type of investment method, whether that's a financial advisor with a financial advisor or a strategy that a financial advisor is using. Not only that, but I've hired, I added up when I was putting together information for this video, I've hired or been involved with hiring and overseeing 10 financial advisors over the years, either for my own family or for my more extended family members. So. I've worked with a lot of financial advisors and I learned from this the things that are really important and how to know if a financial advisor is good. A lot of people feel like they can't know if a financial advisor is good or they're looking for the wrong things. They think it's about the communication or the, you know, various, or they're comfortable with them. Do they like their personality? But it's sort of like a hiring a surgeon. You really want somebody that's going to do a good job more so than having a great personality or meeting with you at the right time in the right way. So thinking about a financial advisor and realizing that a financial advisor is the probably the person that is going to determine your investment returns, which is going to determine whether you have funds for life <laughs> if you're working with one, and also realizing that you're probably paying this person thousands, if not ten thousands of dollars every single year, whether or not your investment returns go up or down. This is something that's really, really important to focus on and to understand are these three steps in how to know if your financial advisor is good, if they're doing a good job for you. So the very first step is to simply look and see if you're moving toward or away from your financial goals. Now, we all know that what gets measured is more likely to happen. And a lot of investors don't have financial goals. They're not super clear about what they even want in their life, let alone how much it costs. And I find this, I've resisted this myself. All the stuff I talk about here, I've done myself, both the good and the bad and the ugly. So sometimes it's hard to know what, what you want, first of all, and then it's hard to know how much it costs. So this is one of the things we do in my investing program is get super, super clear about this. But if you work with a financial advisor, you've probably done this step. So what you want to do is see if that financial advisor is taking you toward those goals that you really, really want to reach. And you want to be able to do this somewhat independently of your financial advisor because, well, this person works for you. And think of it as like anybody else you would hire, you want to be able to independently evaluate them to see if they're getting the results that you want. You wouldn't, for example, involve anyone else that you hire to do anything in the process of evaluating them. You would do it independently. So this is something you're going to do if you use an advisor and see if you're moving toward those financial goals. Now, this gets a little bit tricky and here's why it's tricky. At any point in time, it may be that you're temporarily not moving toward your goals. And I say that because, well, anybody that invests on your behalf, anybody that invests on their own behalf is going to have losing times. Investing is not a straight up 
situation. We have ups and downs in our investing progress. And so keep in mind that you may evaluate a financial advisor and if it's someone you started using recently and you don't have a long time frame to evaluate this person with, you may see that, well, I'm not moving toward my goals. But it may be that it's the overall market and it may be that the time frame isn't long enough. But having said that, there are also limits as to how much downside risk you're willing to tolerate. So keep that in mind. But also remember, you've got to just evaluate and make sure you're moving toward your goals. That's the biggest factor in determining a financial advisor is what kind of returns are they giving, getting for you because you're spending a lot of money on a financial advisor and they're determining basically your financial future. Okay, so that's the very first step. And, and you do that simply by tracking your investment returns and your investments, period. Uh, I like to say in my investing program, we have a, uh, a treasure list where we have all the assets listed and we track them to see what kind of returns we're getting and if we're utilizing our capital fully. So this is something that you can do on your own. Now, if you work with an advisor, you've probably stepped into this already as far as defining what you want, as I was saying. So the so, next step to determine if your financial advisor is good is to really, really understand how your financial advisor works. You may think that, like I was saying, your financial advisor would get you out of the market before a bear market, for example, as I thought in the 2000s decade. And that didn't happen. I was really disappointed. But what I didn't understand is the financial advisors were strategic. There are strategic financial advisors and there are tactical financial advisors. Strategic financial advisors don't necessarily have a main goal of getting you out of the market before there's a bear market. I know that sounds kind of crazy, but the way strategic investing works is you own assets such as stocks, such as bonds, assets that are more growth oriented and with a little bit more risk and less growth oriented or not growth oriented at all, but are more held for for risk management and the overall portfolio is meant to work within your goals with a, an acceptable amount of risk so those assets are bought and they're held they offset each other the risk management is in place by the assets that are owned that's how strategic investing works you're probably familiar with asset allocation model. You put a certain percent in stocks, a certain percent in bonds, and that's the whole idea, is that when stocks go down, bonds will go up and vice versa. Now, this is a whole topic. I've done another video about how this hasn't really worked uh, in over the past century. It has worked in the past few decades, but it hasn't worked. It has not worked more often than it has worked over the last century. I've got another video on that if you want to check that out. Nevertheless, strategic investing is very, very popular still. A tactical investor, on the other hand, or a tactical financial advisor as well, will do things that um, are more active. They're more tactical. Uh, a tactical financial advisor may say this particular asset uh, uh, class is very overpriced or it's very risky right now. So we're going to reduce your holdings or I'll take you out of this asset class altogether and you're going to hold this or we're going to go to 60% cash or 100% cash until things are less risky or we're going to buy this asset class instead of that asset class for all these various reasons. That's a tactical financial advisor. So it's really important when you de when you determine whether your financial advisor is good is what kind of financial advisor you have. Neither is strictly right or wrong. I personally at this age and point in my investing journey am a tactical investor for most of the assets we hold. I've got another video explaining that a little bit more <laughs> um, because I do both really, but I'm also very tactical in nature. So it's important to understand the financial advisor that you hire, what kind of financial advisor that they are so that you can compare their results to other financial advisors that are in the same category as them because they're going to get different different returns. They're going to use different approaches. They have different goals, really. 
So it's really important to understand what kind of financial advisor you're working with or you're thinking of hiring. And then the third step in evaluating a financial advisor to see if the financial advisor is good is simply comparing their performance to that of the closest related benchmark. What do I mean by this? Index funds, indexes are known to be a benchmark or a measure for other investments that are maybe more tactical in nature or simply that are uh, being managed by someone else. So you could compare uh, the performance that your financial advisor is getting to a basic portfolio that is made up of benchmark, for example, stocks, which would be the S&P 500 in the U.S. is a very, very common benchmark, as well as something like, if you're in long-term bonds, something like TLT. These are ETFs or institutions exchange traded funds and a very common portfolio is a 60 40 60 percent in stocks 40 percent in bonds asset allocation mix in these index funds or etf they could be mutual funds or etf funds so you can compare the results the advisor is getting to a benchmark and that will help you see if your financial advisor is good or not are they beating what you could do yourself or someone else could do really for you maybe at a much lower cost than what your advisor is getting and what you're really wanting is a financial advisor that beats the benchmarks now having said all of this here's one really really big thing is we we all know in sort of the popular way to um, measure a financial advisor or an active fund is to compare to these benchmarks this is very very common everybody sort of in the industry knows this but there's one really really big thing i can't go without saying and that is that when it comes down to you as an investor you know how you are and it's up to you to decide whether you will be happy investing your own money and also whether or not you're going to freak out and and uh, sell low and buy high which is a, a common mistake investors make due to the emotions that are related to investing emotional investing it's very common and a financial advisor is going to alleviate emotional investing so what you really have to do to determine if your financial advisor is good is see if they are doing a better job than you would do if you were doing your own investing but from a standpoint of am i am i making more money am i moving toward those returns but also, am I happy? Do I like doing this for myself? I love investing. I can't imagine why everyone wouldn't love investing. I think it's great fun to figure out how to make money from money. Not everyone does. And so what you have to do is make you happy because that's what real wealth is about, is doing things that you enjoy in your life and being happy, not just about the investment returns. So consider those two factors as well in determining if your financial advisor is good or not.